Before you hit the final export, there are things you should be doing to make sure your sound is audible, clear, and comfortable for your audience. Let me show you two tricks that will help your sound stand out from the crowd. Welcome to the Film Look. Thanks to Premium Beat for providing the music we used in this episode. We recommend you check them out whenever you need a great track for your film. Visit their royalty free library to see what we mean. We've added a link in the description below. Just like testing the picture of your film on a bunch of different TVs, phones and computer screens, you should also be device testing the sound before you export the final mix. If you're still in the recording, editing or mixing process, check out our indie film sound guide right here for all the basics of sound. First of all, try listening to your mix on the best quality audio device you have access to. In our case, this was a set of studio audio monitors owned by our friend Jordan, a musician and producer. But not everyone has the space to set up an acoustic proof studio with mega expensive equipment. For most of us, and that's us included, a set of headphones is all we have access to for the majority of the editing and mixing process. If you're serious about your sound, it's worth investing in a strong and great sounding pair of headphones which give you great dynamic range, rich tone and are built to last. For Rob, this wasn't the case. I bought these headphones 15 years ago and give them to Rob when I upgraded three years ago. They've lasted, but the audio quality isn't great and they are quite literally falling apart. The team over at One More heard Rob's cries and sent over their triple driver over ear headphones for us to try out. After using them for some sound mixing, listening to some music and watching films, myself and Rob both pretty much said the same thing. Well, it's not like it makes things louder or more clearer. You can just hear more sounds that you can't with over headphones. Which is funny when we found out that One More's tagline is hear more. But honestly, they're a great bit of kit. Sound great, built really well, comfortable, and at a price which a zero budget filmmaker can actually afford. So if you're on the market for a new set of cans, there's a link in the description below. So once you've listened to your mix on the good sounding kit, it's time to start working your way down the audio clarity scale. Think about where your film is going to be listened to the most. If you're putting your film on YouTube, for example, you'll want to listen to your film on a phone, a laptop, through earbuds, and on a TV. These are the most common devices used for watching YouTube videos, so cater the sound mix to the majority of your audience. You may find that some sound effects or lines of dialogue are clear using headphones, but aren't being picked up on a TV for example. Go back to your mixing application and boost the sounds you feel have been washed out. But don't push it so far so that it sounds bad on your default headphones. Try to find yourself a happy medium. Another mistake we zero budget filmmakers can make is exporting the film without volume referencing the sound. We came under this problem with our last film backstage. The audio was mixed so the sound effects, foley, dialogue and music were working well together and were clearly defined in their own sound space, but when we played it on a TV, we had to push the volume up a lot more than usual. So even though everything was mixed together correctly and sounded loud enough on the PC through headphones, it was simply too quiet on everything else. In order to make sure that your film is of the loudness of TV shows and films, you can do something called volume referencing. For a quick and easy way to accomplish this, find an episode of your favourite TV show or film on Netflix or Blu-ray, set your volume to a comfortable level you'd usually set it to and listen to it for a few minutes. Then pause the film and listen to your own film. If you needed to grab the remote and turn the volume right up to match your previous film, your mix is simply too quiet. By doing this, the volume of your film will match to a decent degree that of film and TV. When you are mixing audio on one device, it can sound as loud as needed, but until you reference your film's audio to something else, you might not realise it's too quiet or sometimes even too loud. The audience shouldn't have to adjust the volume of the film midway through. It's not like you have a remote in your hand in the cinema. And if you're planning on taking your film to festivals, you don't want your film to be the one no one can hear. And if you're still in the recording process or looking on tips on editing and mixing audio, check out our Indie Film Sound Guide here for all the basics. Hit that orange lens cap to subscribe, stay notified and remember to achieve it one shot at a time.